Hello folks, Fuzzfinger here, welcome back to Sonic 4 Episode 2, and this is the white part zone, and we are going for Act 1, I have already done it already, but I was only having a look around, and I have to say, what is going on with this aesthetic? Theme parks mixed in with bloody Christmas trees. I have no idea what Sega was thinking in all honesty, although I have to say, despite the fact it's a bloody weird idea for a zone, it is actually gorgeous to look at. I think the graphics really have been improved since the first episode. Uh, the first episode of the game, I mean. As in episode one, not the zone one. You know what I mean. Although, I still have no idea why it took Sega so long to actually bring this episode out. I really thought we would have had like episodes two and three by now, but... From what I've heard, this is actually going to be the last episode anyway of the game. Or of the series. Whatever you want to say. So, I kind of do get the feeling that Sega maybe couldn't be asked with Sonic 4 after the first game got criticised so much. Because we ended up waiting such a long time for this. Something like two or three years, wasn't it? Maybe two years. And it just isn't anywhere near. Although it's pretty good, it's just nowhere near on the level of Sonic Generations. Although one thing I really do like about this is that the physics have been vastly improved uh, over the first game. Anyone who tells you that the physics in this game are no better than Sonic 4 Episode 1, they're lying to you. They are better. They're not brilliant. The whole having to have tails fly you around isn't done in the best way, I don't think. But in saying that, the actual jump mechanics and everything and the physics on, in that sort of sense is definitely better. Why they went and screwed it up in the first game, I have no idea. I really don't know what they were thinking there. So this is one of the other moves that we can do with Tails. We're not just limited to flying. You do sort of lose some uh, movement ability though while you're in that spin attack, so just bear that in mind. You really only want to use it when you need it. Please don't die. Nope. Uh, one thing I have noticed as well, which I think is an improvement, is that it doesn't seem to be as many locations where you can just fall and die. Sonic 4 Episode 1 was just littered with places. Pretty much you fell between any two platforms, you were guaranteed a swift death. But so far in this game, there seems to always be something that you land on, which is nice. I think that's probably just because the levels are bigger, which you know is an improvement. This way, please. As I said, it is a bit of a pain to control this spinny move. You can't turn uh, in the middle of the move. You have to actually stop the move, change your direction, and then try and turn again. And then try and spin again. But, you know, I can't... Well, I was going to say, I can't blame Sega for giving us something new, but that was just bad that I died then. Sort of just nipped out the spinning move for no particular reason. But, no, what I was going to say was, you can't blame Sega for trying to bring something new. It's always risky when they do that, especially when you're going for the traditional 2D Sonic title. Fans pretty much love it as it was. So, it is a risky move, but as long as they're subtle things and nothing too stupid. The whole lock-on thing, I mean, I don't mind that to be honest. I used to use it in Sonic Generations, but you can unlock it. It's not actually there by default on the 2D uh, Sonic level. But you can unlock it, and when, once I did unlock it in Sonic Generations, I pretty much used it all the time. So yeah, I don't mind that. Anyway, uh, that's it for this act, so I'll see you in the next video.